Welcome back to another episode of In Swine Versation, Water, Energy, and Possibilities with Russ Veering. Welcome, Russ. Hey, thanks, Jim. Yeah, nice you're the, yeah, thank you. You're the owner of Central Plains Milling in Nebraska. I had you on a pork producer roundtable a couple months ago. We have a few exciting things to talk about today. Before we get to that, can you give me a brief background of yourself, Russ? Yeah, definitely. Uh, just to, uh, myself alone, I've been involved in the pork industry ever since I was a young kid. Uh, my dad started a feed business back in 1976, so I spent a lot of time uh, manufacturing, making feed, hauling feed, putting bins together, doing all kinds of things like that. And then we got in the swine business uh, and fed a lot of pigs in old style facilities, dry lots. Um, I've hauled feed to a, a site that had a hot wire fence around it. So <laughs> it's uh, it's been interesting over the years how the industry has involved, evolved, but I've been um, involved in a lot of other avenues within the swine industry. And uh, uh, so it's been a fun journey. And currently right now I'm living by Arlington, Nebraska. And uh, my wife and I just moved here in June. And um, my daughters, uh, Shaylin is out in Denver and she's getting married this weekend in Breckenridge. And Greta, uh, my youngest, is in um, Omaha, and she's studying sonography at Methodist College. So um, my wife and I are kind of empty nesters right now, so we've got plenty of time to do a lot of God's work, I guess. So, Well, congratulations. You got the big wedding coming up? Yeah, yeah, we do. So pretty excited about that. And on top of that, you, you're part of a new company called Vironment, mm -hmm. and you guys just launched or you're, you're kind of working on a new technology and you've talked about it on Barn Talk podcast. We talked about it a little bit. And so I think this technology converts a disposable cost into a profit center. Um, can you tell us about this concept and this company, Russ? Sure, sure. Uh, you know, going back about four or five years, um, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out a way to dry manure. Um, so the manure that comes out of our facilities is about 97 to 98% water. Um, that just creates a problem for the industry. It's an awful lot of water uh, to be hauling around in tankers. You know, these tankers that we haul manure in are five or 6,000 gallons. And so I really started working on how ways to, to reduce the amount of water that we haul. So talked to a lot of different people in the industry in municipal waste control and, and management. And uh, found out uh, and, and got introdu introduced to um, Paul Koenig at Vironment. And he had a system for separating the dry matter uh, from the water and creating a more nutrient dense product. And along the way, we've run, run into and found other opportunities uh, for producers that we're going to be sharing with producers in the future. Um, just for example, like carbon credits. Um, the ability to reduce our carbon imp imprint uh, impact, carbon impact on our farms with uh, hauling less liquid manure and so on. But the pain point for me really was you can't always guarantee that you're not going to put water in the pit. And so I think everybody deals with this where a water line breaks or maybe we didn't manage our water good enough over the summer and we end up with a full pit in the fall. And that had happened to me on the 40,000 spaces that we manage. That happened to me about, oh, every other year. You know, some years we do a really good job and some sites we didn't. And so we ended up looking for places to haul manure when nobody had crop out. And so that ended up costing me money. And so, and the other, the other point that's driven me this direction is, you know, we don't own enough land for all the manure that we apply. And so looking at a way to try and extract that value from that manure and create a product that is consistent and saleable. Do people know how wasteful the livestock management system is? You know, I always want to be careful when I'm, when I'm talking about this. And, and I think the way that we deal with manure today is the best way. Um, you know, we, we do, keep it contained in what they call a, a CAFO, a confined animal feeding operation or a deep pit or a lagoon. 
And so we don't have any uh, contamination of groundwater, all those things. So we make sure that we uh, manage our waste treatment facilities in an in a upstanding way. So um, I think that, you know, we've done the same thing for a long time and it is sustainable for us to haul manure out of our deep pitted barns and apply it to crop ground that creates corn or soybeans and then gets put back into our pigs. So I think that's a, a good thing. However, I really feel that, you know, just this is just my opinion. We haul way too much water. And just to give you an example, so we just recently built a 13,000 end site, um, all feeder to finish. And if we would have put deep pits into it, that would be 1,500 loads at 5,000 gallons a load, 1,500 loads off of that site uh, and then applied to ground. Now, if we change that, to where we separate the water at that point in time, then what we can do is we can reduce our transport um, down to about 200 loads. So it's a huge difference in, you know, our impact in the environment, uh, the roads, the public, all that stuff. So when we reduce the amount of trucks and, and tankers running up and down the gravel roads, haul manure, it really makes a big difference. And the other thing is it gives the producer an opportunity to apply the manure when he feels is the best time. So if we can dry it and stockpile it, and that that was that's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. You know, being in Northeast Nebraska, that's feedlot territory. And you have all these cattle feed yards hauling all their dry matter out of their yards, piling on the edge of a field, and then applying it when they have time to do it. Um, we don't have that ability in the swine industry, so um, we have to take it right out of the pit and put it right on the farm. So um, trying to get that advantage as well with our technology. Has there been innovation here the last 30 years? Uh, I think there has been, you know, I mean, with umbilical lines, and I know that some people are working on different cropping practices as far as um, minimum till and actually and I can't think of the, the name of it, but um, strip till. So, uh, and then also there's some post-emergence application that's happening too with umbilicals. I know that there's some situations doing that, but realistically with a lot of, and, and I've met a lot of people in the swine industry, talk to a lot of people in the swine industry. When you start talking about this concept, nobody's really gotten engaged in it. Um, nobody's really said, okay, let's spend some money and let's figure something out to change the way that we apply manure. And so I feel like we're the only ones really working on this. There's been some technology and some people trying to clean or separate the water, um, but not to the extent that we're going after. Uh, we're going after the to have the ability to drink the water once you have separated the dry matter. So you're focusing on the swine industry first. Where else can this go? Uh, I, I think that the next high water use industry would definitely be dairies. Um, you know, there's an awful lot of water that that runs through a dairy from a wash standpoint, from a flush standpoint. Um, a lot of lagoons that they have around their facility to be able to recycle that water and run it back into the system is going to be a, a huge benefit to those operations. So can you touch base a little bit more on impacts of the environment, a few key points for us? Yeah. So when we're able to intercept that manure, so what we've built here recently is a pull plug system. And so if you're not familiar with that, it's a, it's a two foot deep pit and we've got a pull plug on either end of the barn. And what we're able to do is pull that plug and run that manure through the machine and be able to dry it and then separate the water and flush that water back into the pit. One thing that we found is that we reduce the amount of greenhouse gas that's coming off of that effluent in the pit. So imagine this, if you have a deep pitted barn that's eight foot deep and you only pump it once or maybe twice a year, what happens in that pit is it continues to break down. So there's a lot of volatile solids that will work microbes that will continue to work and break down the organics. And so you lose a lot of the nutrient value that's in your pit over that six or 12 month period. When you're able to intercept that manure sooner, 
So let's say, you know, we flush that pit every 10 days. We found that the manure value, the concentration of the manure is more than 300%, you know, uh, 300% more, um, uh, well, higher, right? Higher yeah. nitrogen, higher phosphorus, higher um, potash. Everything is is a lot better in that in that manure. So, and it, because it doesn't have that chance to gas off, and that's that's where we are reducing the amount of greenhouse gases that are going into the environment from from that perspective. So let's focus a little bit on the problem and the solution and how that's an opportunity for producers with this technology. Yeah, so the ability to reduce the amount of transport loads going out to the field. Um, when we dry that manure, we we do that. Um, on my facility, it's about $150,000 benefit to not have to haul that many loads out to the facility. And, and the other thing is where we have highly pig dense areas, in some cases we produce almost enough manure or maybe more manure than what we can use on the uh, as fertility on the soil in that local area. When we're able to dry that manure, we're able to ship it, you know, given whatever freight is, 50, 100 miles away. And I know that if you come into Nebraska here, there are places where we could use more phosphorus, we could use more nitrogen. Um, and that leads me down another road. You know, the United States is a, is a huge importer of those nutrients as well. And so the more sustainable we can create that circle here in the United States, uh, the better off we're going to be. When it's highly liquid, um, so, you know, if you're hauling 97 or 98 percent water, you can't transport manure more than two miles for it to be economical. Now, I mean, take 98% of the, you know, take the water out of that equation. Now we have, we've opened up a bigger area where we can transport and apply manure. So there's areas in Iowa, there's probably areas in Nebraska, Ohio, Illinois, Kansas, South Dakota, Minnesota, Probably especially, zero, where seven, three, we can possibly five, seven, do better. Five, four, three. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Phone ringing? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was you. <laughs> okay, no, sorry, I don't, it, it's not me. But, you know, we're able to um, drop that nutrient where it's needed versus, you know, okay, so we're, we're landlocked two miles within the facility. We can actually transport it to where it's going to do better for us. Along the way, we figured out a lot of things. And what we did recently is, um, well, and actually it's happened over the past two years, uh, we've built a carbon credit algorithm that takes point A, which is manure coming out of the pig, to point B, application. So once, once we get a COD, carbon oxygen demand reading, on the effluent that we're processing, then we take a COD reading on the discharge water. And once we put that into our algorithm, we actually get the amount of carbon credits that we are uh, sequestering or, or reducing um, the amount of carbon emissions or greenhouse emissions we were reducing for the environment. Um, and it's a significant amount. Um, the 13,000 ed facility that we have is about 5,000 metric tons of, of greenhouse gases that we sequester over the course of a year. Well, what, what kind of brought this all together? You know, what brought it together is just the pain of of dealing with manure, right? And and trying to make sure that, you know, if you think about it, it's a highly liquid um, product and you can't really say, hey, it's worth X because if there's 1% more water in it and 1% less dry matter, the value is incredibly variable. And when you're able to dry it, you can create a guaranteed analysis. You can have analysis on it and then you can market it from that perspective. So I think it's it's just trying to figure out a way to add value. You know, we've got sow units out there that have lagoons. What would it be like if you had a revenue source? If you're intercepting that manure before it hits the lagoon, you're putting water back in your lagoon 
or you're recycling that water back as drinking water to your swine facility. Really big in the future too, um, the ability for us to reduce the amount of water uh, that we're pumping out of the ground. And with the new technology, we, we've got our, our technologies actually with engineers right now working on some different revisions um, to where we will be able to drink the water coming out of it. And so when we're able to do that, it's almost a closed loop system. So you have a swine facility that consumes enough water to get it charged. So we've got to pump water out of the well to get it charged. Then after that, the only discharge from that facility is going to be dry matter and, uh, and a highly um, applicable, uh, highly um, efficient dry matter that we can apply back to our fields. That's the, that is the goal. And that is the circle that I'm working in and I've been working in for the past five years. And, and we're very, very close to, to really rolling fast in the industry with this technology. So another goal is to become low to zero environmental impact. Can you say that one more time? You broke up. The, the additional goal that you have is to become low to zero environmental impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that just goes back to the conversation that we just had where, um, you know, we built, a, if you build a, say a 5,000 head site and, uh, or a sow, you know, whichever, um, you don't have manure wagons running in and out of that facility. You maybe have side dump trucks, uh, you know, it, to give you an idea. So if you haul feed to that facility um, of every ton of feed you haul in, one third goes to maintenance of the pig. One third goes to creating pork uh, and 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 bacon and ham, and then the other third goes in the pit. And so, if you haul, you know, four three tons of feed to a facility, one ton goes in the pit. And so, a ten thousand sow unit uses about probably about ten thousand tons of feed, but uh, cowboy mats about a ton per sow. Uh, so then you'd be looking at you know, close to uh, 3,500 tons going out of that facility in manure. Um, that would be all that would be going out of that facility uh, if we can recycle all the water uh, back into the drinking uh, and then also be able to, to flush the pits. Another benefit on top of that is, is when we don't flush our pits very often or if we have a deep pit, well, we talk about greenhouse gases and all that continuing to gas off of the pit the workers, it affects the pigs, those gases in that facility. Um, and so if we can actually reduce the amount of gases that are coming off of that facility or coming off of those pits and affecting the workers and the pigs, it, it's, it's a huge win as well. Are there other technical advantages? Yeah, I mean, we've talked about a lot of them, but I think the, the biggest part of it is the economic advantage. So we're reducing costs by reducing the amount of transport. We're creating a more valuable product. That's the other thing that we're doing. We're giving a producer the freedom to be able to apply manure when he wants to. And there are, there are producers out there that have grow spaces that, you know, maybe they don't own land right there. Uh, and they'd like to get it on their land, but they can't. So um, if we're able to draw, dry that down, they're able to get that advantage as well. Uh, you throw in the idea of the carbon credit scenario in which we're, we're north of, um, well, the rent. Let's say, I mean, we're, we're going to have enough revenue to cover more than the rent on the facility. So, I mean, in some cases, it could be a situation where you say, hey, if you don't bring pigs in, you have to pay rent, but otherwise you don't because um, we've created enough carbon credits on the other side to offset that. So the value, the monetary value of this is, is, uh, is really high. Um, the Inflation Reduction Act that they just passed recently um, took our carbon credit value, um, which is the 45Q, uh, from about $40 per ton to $180 per ton. So it was a huge win on, and I, I'm not, I'm definitely not liberal and I'm not supporting, I don't like to support the idea of the government just handing out checks. But uh, the government wants to be um, carbon neutral or, or have a low environmental impact by a certain date, and they're pushing it and they want to pay for it. So 
um, at that point in time. I mean, if pork producers are going to have get the benefit of that, why not? And this is the kind of technology that'll help people get that. And you think it all ties back to sustainability? Yes. Yeah. I mean, so the full circle. I mean, if you, if you're looking at the the pork system is pretty sustainable the way it is. I, I'm not saying that it isn't. Um, there are some things that we just need to clean up. And and if we can handle this waste in a much more efficient and valuable manner, and and so what I mean by valuable is being able to create a product that is not just a byproduct. It's a product that we can market and sell um, to either farmers. Uh, we can ship it out to California for organic crops, whatever it might be. But now we have a fertilizer source that is regional um, or maybe even national. So um, there are there are a lot of opportunities. So do you mind reviewing the the graph? You got a great graph here, Russ. Maybe just touching, do a quick touch point on everything. Maybe sure. We, we start with field. Yeah, sure. Um, there's there's many concepts that we're working on. Um, and what it comes to comes down to is on the field side of it, part of the carbon credit that we have to um, allow for is what happens in the field as well. So um, just because we're harvesting carbon credits off the manure, we have to take into account the um, amount of carbon that is released in the field, the amount that's released in feed, what we're doing in the manure, we go to processing and then of those um, all play into this carbon credit model that we set up uh, for uh, our environment process. On the field side of it, you know, we're we are creating that corn, that soybean. It goes into the feed system. In the feed system, there is a possibility that as we continue to grow here um, and we have more data and more analysis on the manure, we can affect that feed system. So at that point in time, we can take the, the information that we get from manure, which is gonna be our nitrogen or phosphorus, all those things that are coming out, we can test a lot of, a lot of the components of the manure and make adjustments on feed that will maybe and, and possibly reduce the amount of greenhouse gases because of the adjustments we make in feed. On the manure side, what we're doing is, is a live digestible, di digestibility study is what we're doing on a, on a daily basis when we pull analysis of a specific date period in the barn, um, depending on weather, environment, everything. So the manure side of it, um, we've talked about that an awful lot, um, being able to reduce the amount of water, transport loads, create carbon credits, reduce the amount of gassing off that happens in a facility affects the people, affects the pigs, affects the neighbors. So that is that is another part of the wheel. And then processing. So, you know, once once we um, raise that pig, then we go into processing at the packer level. And actually the carbon credit side of it actually plays into the processing part as well. So, um, you know, we have to absorb uh, the 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 carbon credit side of the processing as well in our in our carbon credit process. So um, yeah, and then going to the water, you know, being able to um, recycle that water, create um, water credits, uh, be able to have less discharge water from our facilities uh, makes a huge difference. And there's a lot of other uh, livestock operations, whether you talk about dairy, um, beef, I mean, you can talk about the packing industry and the amount of water that they use there too. So there is an opportunity for us to work in that goal as well. And then on the fertilizer side, really sp specifically looking at nutrient availability, um, soil profile, the microbiome that happens under the crop that happens in the soil um, and benefiting that as well. When we apply phosphorus that's been through a pig stomach, that's been through that breakdown, been through the pit, been through our process, it's 100% available to the crop that first year, along with all the micro, other micronutrients. So there's been a lot of studies, a lot of information, and we're actually partnering with a, a group that wants to use this manure for not only organic application, but 
the application of, um, you know, just right into corn and soybeans for commercial growers here in the Midwest. Oh, great. Yeah. Are you ready for the final word, Russ? I think so. In 10 years from now, we want to be blank. If you fill in the blank. Yeah, we in 10 years from now, we want to be on pretty much every farm. So it's our goal to partner with the pork industry to bring this technology um, and, and release and create that opportunity for those carbon credits to be ha harvested by our producers on a daily basis. So when you talk about sustainability and you talk about legacy of the pork industry, it's a lot of great families. It's a lot of great farms. Everybody's involved in it from coast to coast. If you are a row crop farmer, there's a lot of people that have grow barns. There's sow units. There's organizations that have multiple sites. You know, we want to partner with the swine industry and we want to continue to help and create a more sustainable future for them. The carbon credit side of it, I mean, in the idea of, you know, an ASF outbreak and the idea that, you know, there's going to be some kind of a challenge that pork producers are going to face in the next five or 10 years, even the sustainability score. We talk about scope one, two, and three um, with um, the SEC and some of the crackdown that's happening with publicly traded companies to be able to have a sustainability score, all those things. So in the next 10 years, I really want to be involved with every pork producer in the United States, making sure that um, we can prove that we are a very uh, sustainable system uh, in the pork industry and continue to innovate that way. And education is key. Yeah, over and over again, education yeah. is key. You know, the what happens below the slat isn't really paid attention. We don't pay a lot of attention to it. Um, and, and what's driven me on this so hard is the amount of pain <laughs> that I felt below the slat. Um, and I understand that we have health issues and, and we have performance on pigs that we want to try and meet. We want so many tons of pork produced for sow on an annual, annual basis. Those are all important aspects. Um, and we are so good at that. Uh, we've got a lot of AI technology in the industry that is doing everything it can, videotaping pigs, you know, um, scales, whatever it might be in our facilities. Um, but I don't think anybody's really spent a lot of time below the slat. And that's where we are. That's what we're doing. We're working on that side of it. Um, and I'm really excited to help create value for producers that, you know, maybe don't have the ability to, to grab that value on that manure on that side of it. Well, Russ Faring, thank you for sharing this technology on Inswine Versation. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on, Jim. I appreciate it. Yeah, we look forward to keeping appraised of things. Yep, we will.